While having a tidy up, I noticed that this meter was showing that lovely crystal outline round its battery compartment that says an alkaline battery has leaked. And I opened it and I took the battery out that had leaked and there was electrolyte inside. I had to strip the meter apart and give it a good thorough clean out inside. But the meter is now fine, but actually running on nickel metal hydride cells instead of nickel, uh, instead of the alkaline or others. And it made me realise that alkaline batteries are actually more trouble than they're worth because the main reason for using them in the past versus things like nickel metal hydride cells is that nickel metal hydride cells used to have a fairly high self-discharge. So in applications like this, whenever you went to use it, the battery would be flat. But that's changed. They've now got the, the cells that use a thicker separator inside and a chemistry tweak that lets them supply them pre-charged or if you top them up, they will literally, they will last years without needing charged in an application like this. And I took a, a hunt around for uh, some older alkaline batteries that may have leaked. It wasn't that hard to find them. This is an old, out-of-date Duracell Procell that has just really leaked to the point it's all burst its raffer off. Here's the matching standard Duracell. Again, it's out-of-date, but it's leaked horribly and pushed the electrolyte out the end. And even of more recent Kodak Extra Life sort of dollar store pound shop battery had leaked. And I looked into it a bit, and from what I can see, the problem is that as the part of the chemistry of how these operate, they generate gas inside just the normal use uh, with normal discharge. And the pressure will gradually increase, and the seal is supposed to keep that pressure in. But well, over time, it just gradually seeps out, and you end up with leakage. That doesn't really happen with nickel metal hydride so much. I mean, I've come across nickel metal hydride cells that have grown a little bit of fluff around them. But in most instances, most of the problems I've found in the past have been the nickel cadmium cells, which are kind of, they're outdated now. They're not, they're not allowed in consumer products, the nickel cadmium cells, because they've got cadmium in them. And it's a shame in a sense because, well, the nickel cadmium is a very robust battery. It's still used in several uh, situations, uh, particularly military, medical and emergency lighting because it's got a huge temperature tolerance range and it's also a very, very robust battery compared to the nickel metal hydride. But having said that, um, the point of this video is to say that maybe it's time to stop using alkaline batteries. I don't think they've got a place anymore. I can't think of any unique feature other than their slightly higher voltage. And to be honest, if any electronic equipment uh, flags up 1.2 volts as being fully discharged, that's a bit of an issue with that design of that equipment. But I would say that a good step these days, a good direction to go, is to use the modern nickel metal hydride cells. The Even the sort of, for applications like this, it's not going to be a very high current draw. You could use the low-capacity ones that are quite cheap, but the ones that specifically say low self-discharge or ready-to-use, pre-charged. Because um, there's a very good chance that uh, just one alkaline cell feeling like this would potentially save cost in certain pieces of test equipment like fluke test lamps, for instance. I'm just thinking of all the fluke things and other stuff that have had battery leakages in them that just uh, one little nickel metal hydride, even if you only used it once or twice, would still save a lot more than the cost of using these rotten old alkaline batteries that are just prone to destroying electronic equipment.